Let me introduce myself. My name's Mark Holmes. I'm a problem solver, a fix-it guy. You're looking here at some of my work right here. My associates They like to call me OG. I like to think that that's old guy. Old guy is right. Good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great morning. It is day number two of the draft. And I literally feel like I've been hit by a Mack truck. <clears throat> uh, I feel like, I sound like I swallowed a frog. Um, I don't know how well I'm going to be uh, with my voice today, but I got a bag of hauls. So that way, this raspiness, because it literally sounds like I just smoked about five packs of cigarettes. But maybe some of y'all like uh, the deep, deep voice from uh, me. So let's get to it. You know, I've come to the conclusion that the Dallas Cowboys, it doesn't matter what the Cowboys do. There's always going to be people that are mad. Going to this draft, we talked about the Dallas Cowboys trading back many, 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 many times. Trading back and trying to make up for that fourth round pick that they spent with um, getting Trey Lance in the fold. Um, it's interesting the takes that you're getting from people and all that um tyler guyton the knock on him is that he is very very raw that he has only had 14 starts under his belt that he is um played left excuse me right tackle in college and that he's going to be playing on the left i think the cowboys looked at this as opposed to the here and now Allegedly, the Cowboys had five uh, their top five guys that he was number four on the list of guys that they really, really wanted um, on the roster. And him being there um, was, for them, a win. Now, size-wise, he is... Okay, I, I've been calling David over here Sasquatch. Shit. That's the daddy of Sasquatch. Um, if any of you guys have ever seen me... Um, with Calais Campbell, okay? Calais Campbell, in fact, I remember being at the Super Bowl in New Orleans with uh, Cam Jordan, okay? Cam Jordan was on this side, and Calais Campbell was on this side. And I looked like a vertically challenged person. Those guys are huge. Well, it turns out um, Tyler Guyton is six foot eight, 330 pounds, which is exactly... Calais Campbell's size. He is very, very strong. He's um, very athletic. And they look at this and say that this guy has got a little bit of an edge on to him. He is going to be the replacement for Tyron Smith. And they made a calculated decision in saying that we can get him into the fold and we can also bring in another player. And I want to remind you that the Cowboys, um, I'm one that never wants to move up in the first round. I just don't. I just don't see where the Cowboys have had that much success with it. When we traded a first and a second to get supposedly the best defensive player in the draft of Morris Claiborne, it really blew up in our face. That was another guy who could not stay healthy. Um, moving back, it's funny because listening to some of the comments and stuff that we're getting from people about the Cowboys moving back and taking Tyler Guyton. And mind you, I'm going to get Miss Tracy to start working on um, a new shirt. TNT. TNT. Tyler and Tyler. As in dynamite. Okay? As in they're going to be blasting some holes open. That's going to be my hope. That's going to be my dream. That's going to be our new shirt. Uh, TNT left side. Um, so watch out. All clear. TNT. 
Oh my goodness! You saw, you saw it, you saw that light bulb. It just, you, you saw it come on, didn't you? You, you did. Okay. Anyway, um, somebody will probably beat me to the punch and steal it and say, hey, and copyright it and get it from me. But remember, you heard me say it last night. TNT left. Okay. Um, it's funny because I remember vividly, vividly when the Cowboys did the same thing, moving back. I want to say 2012. Um, and taking Travis Frederick. We ended up getting um, Terrence Williams with the third-round pick that we picked up on there. And Travis Frederick was one of the best centers we've ever had. Um, unfortunately, his career was shortened uh, by Hillian Barson. And i also remind you that the Cowboys, even though Jerry Jones seemed to forget when he said, you know, you, you don't trade back when there's a, a Micah Parsons there. Uh, you did, Jerry. You, yes, yes, you, yes, you did, Jerry. You traded back, and you picked up a third-round pick in which you got Goldston, a guy I hope that has a great role on the, the team this year. So I'm looking at that and saying, the Cowboys, more than anything else, are a creature of habit. And speaking of habit, I haven't had my habit of my coffee this morning, um, which is kind of crazy because I'm about to have my caffeine headache in a few. And I'm surprised David Wiley hasn't been talking about, I need my Starbucks. I need my Starbucks. <clears throat> oh, Houston, see? I, I knew it. It wasn't going to be long. Um, I'm going to be going down there to get some, too, as soon as we get this done. Um, gut feeling from the, some of the writers from the Cowboys. Nick Eatman says this. I'm not going to lie. I was pulling for Graham Barton at 24. I think there's something to be said for taking the best player at the position, especially one of need. But the Cowboys were thinking more long-term with Guyton, uh, who probably needs a little bit more development. But the upside of a premium position usually wins out. What initially scares me is the lack of starts from Guyton, who has just 14. But then again, I actually mocked them taking Artemis Mims from Georgia, who has just eight. So, you know, kind of contradicting yourself there a little bit. If you can play, you can play. And the Cowboys believe Guyton can certainly do that. He's got the length and the feet being converted, being a converted tight end to be a great left tackle. So when you think about that, you're talking about a guy who had to, of course, block and run routes and things, which is going to make him more athletic and more able to move. I also believe this move was not taking Barton shows how much the Cowboys like Brock Hoffman and T.J. Bass as potential centers. And I have to agree with that. And see, here's the thing that I think probably more than anything else, they're looking and saying, we want to be able to just maul people to run on that side. And it may be a case where, this does get you better suited to being able to run on that side. There he is. The mailman was out delivering the mail, and he didn't come back with any coffee. No, I uploaded a couple of videos. Okay. Um, so the thing here is having Tyler Smith, who has become an all-pro at left tackle, excuse me, left guard, um, it's better not to mess with that if you don't have to. And figuring that you're going to have two new starters, it's better to have them on each side of him. He can help out, of course, with the tackle. And, of course, he can help out with the center. But I, I for one, and this is one of the things I've been asking my man, Game Time Brian, and we'll elaborate when we go have breakfast, uh, maybe have a uh, morning breakfast roundtable again. But um, I think that the Cowboys believe in Brock Hoffman um, in the way that when we were going through um, I want to say that the Cowboys believed in Terrence Steele when everybody said we need a tackle, and they didn't draft his replacement. And so this is the thing that we don't know um, from not being there with all the practices, how good somebody may or may not be, or guys they look and say, this guy is as good as a free agent that's out there. And that has been the case, believe it or not, this lack of free agency, it's not like we were always going through and getting free agents. And then all of a sudden, we just stopped this year. We never started, y'all. This is Cowboys uh, building a roster 101. But getting that extra pick, um, 
if they end up getting uh, Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson, one of the running backs that are key, and Jerry Jones has been out here, of course, talking about uh, Jonathan Brooks like crazy. I, I'm, I think he's trying to baffle him with bullshit. And basically, uh, maybe they're more interested in Trey Benson. I don't know. But having three picks today, three picks today, um, things look a lot better than just having the three picks we were going to have between the two days. Um, and having the extra uh, picks for next year because the compensatory ones, you might see them go up deeper in the second round and get another guy. Um, you know, and look and say, okay, maybe they still get a center. I don't know. Don't know who's still left on the board. I, that's I, I'm not that guy. All right, good people. I am going to get with the guys. I'm going to go downstairs and get me some coffee and um, get some breakfast. Uh, definitely get something on this throat because it's going to be a long day. And let me say I appreciate each and every one of you guys. My apologies because... Um, I screwed the pooch. I um, am constantly doing multitude of things. And when you say that you are jack of all trades um, and you're doing so many different things between packing for the chip and driving on the trip, um, the cable that I needed, I left at home. And um, I used my man um, Primetime's one thinking that I could use it as the charging cable and all that. But I think that was actually the problem of why my microphones uh, weren't working as good as they should have been, that it was just a charge cable and not a data cable. So live and learn, and um, we'll do better today. All right, good people, I appreciate the support, and uh, keep spreading the mojo. And um, I'll see you guys at the draft. Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Are you just one that sits on the sideline to talk about other people?